Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. I think we can start. My name is Artyom Metelev. I'm the co-founder of the Association of Volunteer Centers. We are the partners of the 19th World Festival of Youth and Students, the partners of volunteer program and of the business program. The two days conference, we wanted to hold it uh, on the topic of volunteer and uh, civil activity. As you know, this topic is uh, one of the most popular in the discussion in the business program. And we have a separate uh, civil platform, platform, platform civil development, 53 events, more than 130 world experts are taking part in uh, the uh, topics of volunteering, social entrepreneurship, and all other forms of civil uh, actions. We are discussing the role of uh, people in uh, the civil society of 2030, and we are looking at the results of uh, the two days meeting. We have also the volunteer program of the festival. There are some up to 5,000 volunteers who are working on all objects of the World Festival of Youth and Students and who help us to make this event real. On the two days press conference, there are guests. Every Each of the guests could share his ideas, information, plans and topics for the development of civil act activism and volunteering. The Bugayev Alexander Vecislavovic, uh, the leader of the Federal Agency for uh, Youth Affairs, Anatoly Kurbanov, the center of uh, the UN Organization for Volunteering, and Mr. Abdurrahman Lyman, the president of ISIC Organization, International Students Identification Card, and Ilyana Ulyanova, uh, president of the fund, and Uwe Durak, our silver uh, volunteer from Germany, who came to work here to be also volunteer, uh, part of the volunteer program, and Viktor Shaslivi, the civil activist, he takes part at the World Festival of Youth and Students, and he's also part of the business program. I would like to start from you, Alexander Vyacheslavovich, please put your presentation on the screen. We know that Rosmaladyosh supports the development of uh, volunteers uh, movement in Russia, and you are the key state organ in this issue. But here on the festival, I think you would like to speak uh, about the important topic, about the important team, uh, the project that could help thousands of volunteers uh, in Russia to realize their ideas. Uh, greetings, dear colleagues, dear friends. I'm happy to greet you here. Thank you very much that you gathered here for the press conference. I understand how many events are there on the festival. They're very interesting. We are curious. And uh, I would like to thank you for your interests for this uh, topic of utmost interest, uh, the topic of our two days press conference. Of course, we in Russia do have a huge amount of projects, uh, the social projects um, that are led by the people who are in love with what they are doing. And our aim as the feder federal organ, as a federal agency, is to make the, the amount of these projects uh, on a great, great scale. And this is actually the aim of the project that I would like to represent for you. This project, the name is uh, I want to make good things together. This project underlies uh, the, uh, the team, the role of the team in volunteering, but it is, uh, its aim is the, uh, concrete, is the defined uh, author-based initiatives to change the world in, around us. The project is uh, uh, presented for the guys who live in small cities and regions, but not in the center. Uh, in uh, some uh, in the small cit cities, the organization, uh, organization and facilitator of the project is the Associ Association of Young Centers, uh, the Higher School of Economics is uh, also one of uh, the most important partners uh, in the development of this project. And the Rosmoldios is also supporting these initiatives. I want to tell that in the frames of this project, we are planning to consolidate uh, 
1,000 of uh, the projects of such kind, and we are eager to support 500 of the projects uh, by means that we have. There are different means available for us. Of course, this is the competition-based, uh, the challenge for the projects, and we will uh, work only with 500 out of, of 1,000. You can see the more 1,000 of initiatives here in the presentations. We are eager to find them. I will later explain how we will do this. And this, you can see that 100,000 of people are planned to be involved into the work. The qualitative uh, aims of the project are, of course, the rise of the prestige of authors, of social initiatives, and volunteers uh, in our society. So, speaking about prestige, the prestige of uh, being called volunteer here in Russia is uh, not glaring uh, before our eyes as it was uh, several years ago. The society accepts the volunteers, the society alternates uh, the term uh, of the volunteer, but still the prestige that uh, is uh, presupposed by, uh, is also underlined by this project. So this is the collective thing, the social uh, self-establishment of people uh, because all the so sociological uh, means and studies shows show that uh, the need to be useful, that the need to help uh, is represented in all kinds of uh, our citizens and of course in the youth and uh, more and more people uh, from the youth they are eager to be the part of this project to uh, raise their self-esteem and uh, they want from us the creation of the possibilities to to grow in the frames of these projects. The key auditory uh, of the project, the project is addressed to the youngsters, to the youth, starting from 8 to 30 years. But these are only the frames and uh, they are not so hard as it can, uh, can be, actually. Of course, Speaking about uh, young people who are uh, less than the eight years old, uh, it is impossible to speak about uh, the volunteer. But all other uh, kinds of people, they are also ori oriented here by this project, in the frames of this project. And further, I think Artyom Metelev can uh, tell about the means of work uh, in the frames of the project. Dear colleagues, the idea uh, of uh, the event that is uh, started at the World Festival of Youth and Students for the thousands of people, the volunteers who came here, lays in the presentation of the instrument for them to find pro partners on the web platform Dobrovolce of Russia. Uh, in the internet. Everyone can register his or her project uh, on the platform uh, to explain uh, the essence of the project and to find the people who are eager to uh, work uh, in this field. So that means if uh, you want to clean up your city, all other people who are also in this initiative can build a team with you. If you are working with uh, ill people, if you are pro bono volunteer, if you are healing people, so you can also take part at the medical uh, projects uh, combined with the volunteering. Our aim is uh, to involve not uh, one or two people, but the thousands uh, of people into the projects. Therefore, we created a good instrument for this. You will see an interactive map showing the projects uh, of initiatives in our country. We can uh, look at the authors. We can follow the realization of the projects and uh, take a look at the results of the projects. We have six nominations for them. These are the projects uh, in the field of culture and uh, art, the volunteer projects, volunteer projects in media, in information, so, internet initiatives. This is our urbanistics, uh, city management, uh, and the projects for the development of cities. These are also the projects uh, for care and attention, the social sphere that is traditional for uh, uh, the volunteering, and the education. All projects combined with the education are uh, a separate thing. Each of the projects that will be registered on the website that we feature right now can be a part of the, pro of the program that is uh, built by our team. 
this is combined uh, with the possibilities for the leaders of the project who will get their own mentors and consultations uh, in the way of realization of their project. They can take part, they will be able to take part in 12 uh, uh, young ad adult uh, uh, forums uh, in uh, our uh, ligers uh, in Orleonac and so on here in the South. They can be uh, involved uh, in uh, the programs and listen to the features of their projects. They will be sustained by the Federal Agency of Youth and Students uh, and by our partners. This project will allow our guys to guide their initiatives not and don't feel uh, alone and to find some people who will be with. This will happen. Uh, at the uh, Dobrovol CRC website, Russian volunteers, literally, and and uh, it, we want to build up this image of a modern hero of the volunteers who are involved in social innovations, and the opening ceremony demonstrated that social uh, issues are the critical things that need to be uh, addressed by the government and society. So this project is directly about that. So uh, the project, uh, apart from the project that I just described, uh, I would like to hand it over to Yelena, who is head of the uh, foundation. You are starting thank you uh, action, a thank you campaign. Uh, why do you think this feeling of uh, gratitude would help unite people around the world? Uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, gratitude is probably one of the feelings that knows no boundaries, no uh, either in space or time. Uh, about 37 years ago, when I uh, found myself in a hospital after I gave birth to my son, I and many years later, I even had no way. I I I, I didn't think about telling him about thank telling him thank you because I even gave my na uh, his name to my son. And once when I visited my mom at the hospital, I recognized him. Uh, I asked him, what's your name, Alek Vadimovich? He answered, uh, do you remember me? Uh, I, I told him uh, that uh, I gave his name to my son. And so this feeling of gratitude that has been with me throughout the years. Probably I failed to tell all the warm words that I had in my heart. And I believe all of us have many people around the world that uh, I would, would like to thank. Our teachers are people who rescued our lives and our health. Our, in the, our digital world of uh, social networks and the internet, uh, the project we want to launch probably will use these technologies to convey this wonderful feeling of gratitude we all feel to a variety of people. And I believe that this feeling is intrinsic to any normal person. Irina Skvartsova will be the face of this project. Uh, may, many know her. Uh, she crashed at the bobsleigh competition at the Olympics, and uh, dozens of doctors. Uh, she had to go through 72 uh, operations. And she went on stage to say thank you for her life. She used 99% uh, of people believed she wouldn't survive, and she wanted to say thank you for that 1% of hope that carried her through. I would like to show you a a short video to understand the process behind our campaign. And then I'll tell you 
how our messages, uh, our postcards would go all around the world through the um, Russian post office that became partner of the program. What is it? Gratitude. It's nice. Happy. It's warm. It is the warmth of our souls that uh, helps not just the people who feel it, but those around you as well. And you in the first place, because you said this word, thank you. Thank you. An all Russian uh, th gratitude campaign without boundaries, or without constraints, at all times. That means we remember, we remember all the good things that happened to us. It starts w with a postage card. At the, post, at the Russian post office, you can choose the card you like best. If you know the address, you can use a blank card. If you don't know the exact address, if it's been many years since you met that person, you, you can find uh, the card with, with the right address just by specifying the name of the person you want to say thank you to. So we have a technical problem, but I would carry on. Starting from today, 15,000 offices uh, of the Russian post office would uh, uh, all those thank you cards would be available and volunteers would distribute over 20,000 of such cards with a, to send around the stories of gratitude and we're going to, to sign the Charter of Gratitude and the United Nations would join this campaign. That means that uh, gratitude stories can be brought together under the same cover. It would be a book of gratitude. We would be able to publish these stories and make movies about it. And these would be stories that would go from one person to another. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Of course, there would be questions, I'm sure, after all the speakers. Uh, would we be able to go to the end of the to the end of this video? Uh, at nine p.m. today tonight, uh, this international gratitude campaign would be launched uh, at the inaugural ceremony. We invite you to attend and to see it for yourself. That was just uh, presented by Elena from the Rybakov Foundation. Uh, apparently there is something with the video file, but just a couple of words about the, the process. So the Russian Postal Service that would um, help send out these cards Again, if you know the, the address, it's okay. If not, uh, we receive that card at the data processing center where volunteers, by the way, volunteers will help us. Uh, thanks for the volunteers of Russia, to the volunteers of Russia uh, in all the cities around Russia that help us to process it. And the, this card would be uh, delivered from one person to another. 
if uh, so it would go either to the exact person or to the organization institution um, if that address is not known if we are unable to find the um, addressee and it, this is possible the newspapers would publish our, our our media partners would publish that story what 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 about the person who is no longer alive but we would still share that story of gratitude and the story would be shared with uh, with his next of kin and we believe this is also very important i believe this would be not just a Russian national campaign, but we hope this campaign would be would find support uh, outside of Russia as well. Yeah, thank you, Elena. I believe all the festival participants uh, will have the opportunity to say thank you to uh, the people they wanted to say thank you to, and. Uh, uh, you can join this campaign um, in any city of Russia, and uh, it will be an ongoing campaign without any time limitations, I would say. Thank you again. Now, Tola. Tola Kurbanov, the co-founder of uh, the uh, uh, Youth and Students Program of the UN. You are a partner of our festival of youth and students. Could you please tell us what is the participation of the UN, who came to us, and uh, what are the volunteers of the UN making here on the festival? Thank you, Artyom. I would like to tell a pair of words about our uh, organization. The volunteers of the UN is the specialized structure of the UN that is uh, working for the last 50 years with volunteers to uh, secure the work of the UN system in different countries of the world. It's the civil contingent of the peacemakers missions and the development programs and humanitarian actions. There are 70 thousands, uh, thousands of people uh, working as the volunteers of the UN in uh, more than 70 uh, countries of the world. We are here on the festival because we think that this could be useful for the youth and students because, you know, our volunteers are in different countries of the world. And we came here just to share our experience and to uh, uh, work, collect uh, with you uh, and to understand our mistakes uh, uh, that can be also done in the system of the UN because you know we're speaking about the huge amounts of energy about huge ideas and innovations that are spreading to us from the youth and students this is also the humanitarian activity for our uh, collective development together with us there are more than 30 volunteers of the UN who are working in UNICEF in the program of development of the UN uh, in the, uh, the who who work with uh, who they work on field in Kenya in India in Vietnam they work with the refugees in Le Lebanon on the west bank of Jordan in Senegal and so on and these colleagues they were in a separate pavilion here near uh, to the press center and during the last three days they are sharing their experience we uh, met the delegations the official delegations and uh, delegates separate and we are exchanging our experience and opinions and some people including me and they are taking part in the sessions and now we are thinking together we what will be the heritage of the festival for us and the for international community i would like to tell you that to, to together with ABC and uh, with the UN, we will lead a conference about the global and regional challenges and possibilities for the development of uh, youth uh, uh, volunteers activities. We ask you to go to us to, to be uh, the part of this conversation, to be a part of uh, uh, the interchange of our experiences. And the uh, Russian Federation and even the whole region can tell us something about the experience here with volunteering and we're also trying uh, to share our experience we want to work here we want to engage more russian citizens uh, to be part uh, of our activities in russia and in different countries of the world i think uh, can this be understood as your official invitation for russian volunteers to be part of the un volunteer activities yes of course thank you very much 
Thank you, Tolia, for your partnerships, for your cooperation. This is naturally the topic of huge interest for the participants of the civil platform and development. Uh, this experience that you could share with us in Sochi, and you will share it. Uwe, good afternoon. You are volunteer of the 19th World Festival of Youth and Students. You came from Germany. You took part at the 10th Festival of Youth and Students in 1973 in Berlin. And now you came here to be volunteer. So could you please tell us about your experience, about your ideas about this festival? Because this is another city, another festival. What is the aim of your visit, uh, of your volunteer visit to Sochi? What was the difference between Berlin then and between Sochi now? And the new answers of the volunteer program. Actually, all the speakers are, are speaking Russian, but not, not, not everyone, of course. Thank you. Hello, my name is Uwe Durak. I came from Germany because I'm very interested in the movement of the festival. Just from the beginning of the festival, uh, it's the 19th festival right now. I understood that, of course, I know Russian a bit and I can take part in it. This happened to happen with me only in the volunteers' boots. But I need to say that this this event is a very uh, is of high importance for me. I did not understand. I did not imagine that the organization will be so strict, and there are so many young people, so many many adults that are involved. They're taking part here, and they are involved in the whole world process. I did not know about this. Of course, we in Germany have the honor activity, uh, like. Uh, but it will it is not organized uh, like the 19th world festival of youth and students it's not it's amateur i'm very proud that i was chosen it was not easy for me uh, of course i've seen the one page there the website and okay i decided to be a volunteer the process took several months actually and uh, from that time, I have uh, many friends in organization on every, st on every step. Actually, there was a direction in Moscow, direction for preparation and conduction of the festival, I think. And I was speaking with them, uh, and uh, I spoke about my issues, and uh, we've managed to uh, work here, uh, uh, and I'm working here from the 10th of the 11th of October in the equipment center. This is a huge work for me, actually. I did not, I could not even imagine. Okay, I am 64 years old, but I could not even imagine that I will work in uh, this topic of techniques. And uh, this. This was not easy for me, but I was not alone. Even uh, I don't speak uh, Russian so well, but the collective, they are friends. We are friends together. Of course, we are not kissing each other, but <laughs> but we understand each other because uh, you cannot make anything alone. Okay, I I know one lady here. She is 44 or 42 years old. She has uh, quite an experience, and it's okay for us to work together. There are many questions, many issues here in my field. How can I change something? I have lost something. Where can I find something from the equipment? And my reaction should she can, cannot be slow. But Olga is near me. This lady. We're a small collective inside of a great collective, a very great collective, actually. And this work is uh, is a feat for me, and I like uh, to be the part of this work. One hour ago, I met uh, one silver volunteer here. This is Vitali. And this guy told me that he, uh, in the year 1957, uh, has seen Tamara Punkel it's the hero of my heart, this lazy I, a lady. I think you know the history of Che Guevara in between this lady. And he told me about this. And now, suddenly, we understand that we finished uh, the one the institute, the Moscow Institute for Energy. 
So I think this festival will be a huge uh, deal of my life. Thank you very much, Uwe. These emotions are precious, and we hope that this week, because it's not only a week, you've been here earlier, but this time sp spent here will be a time of warmth uh, for you in Russia and uh, a time of your experience of Russian and uh, international volunteers. But uh, could you please tell us about the festival in Berlin? Can you compare this 19th World Festival of Youth and Students in Sochi uh, and the festival in Berlin? Uh, what are the differences, perhaps? Have you seen something new here? Yes, this is a complex uh, question. Uh, the slogan of the festival uh, is uh, uh, taking, we accept the past and we go to the future. But the festival of the year 73 was the festival uh, of uh, our history. Today, I've seen the I, I see the modern new festival in Sochi, and I took a look at it. Actually, there are many exhibitions, and I spoke with the people. And it's something colossal. It's wonderful to see how the young people of the world is setting the agenda and showing so much enthusiasm in the process. They're building things, they're creating things, building ships. One of the girls one of the, explained to me uh, uh, the, uh, the working of a nuclear reactor. BN uh, 800. I know something about BN 600 because I worked on this, but she ex gave me a very good explanation. And it's amazing that they're working on such serious things uh, and do this, they do this responsibly. In Berlin, uh, we had Angela Davis, uh, Yasser Arafat, Valentina Tereshkova visited. And Yuri Gagarin visited another festival. Then the mother of Zoya Kasmadimyanska, the wartime hero. This was a, a political uh, part of the political agenda to free the people from the war, from uh, Nazis. This is our past. And we need to remember about the past, because we still have not resolved all the things, all the problems of the past. What I see here, I see uh, that uh, in uh, the festival tries to talk about the future as well as about the past. In 1973, we already took a step into the future. But of course, that was a different, different time. But for us, for the, for the young people, that was really emotional. Because all the young people uh, show a lot of enthusiasm and ha happiness. But what is different is the other topics, the issues uh, the young people discuss, and this is this is good. Thank you very much for your sharing your experience, for your comments. Uh, Abdurrahman Ayman is the president of the ISIC, an international organization. Uh, you already have a 68-year history. You've well, we have presence in most of the countries. You work a lot with students and with young people. Can you sum up your achievement in the world and in Russia as an organization? What are your plans for the near future, especially for the participants of this festival? So, ISEC uh, as an organization was founded back in 1948. Uh, after the Second World War. And literally, it was an initiative that was created by a group of young people that believed that for us not to fall back into those same mistakes, the key is cross-cultural dialogue and establishing that through young people. Fast forward from that 70 years later, we're looking now at an organization that 
is present in more than 122 countries and territories, engaging more than 90,000 young volunteers on an annual basis, whether in the form of members or in the form of global volunteerism, which is a concept that we're really heavy in terms of promoting. How can we develop leadership in a generation of young people through exposing them to cross-cultural environments and in the same time putting them in challenging experiences? Because at the end of the day, the world we're living in currently is full of complexity. So we're not really giving them everything on a silver, silver platter or educating them within closed rooms. We believe that a lot of our education as young people needs to come out in the field and needs to come out in practical experiences. And that's what we try to provide with a lot of young people. So looking at this current moment where we are witnessing the biggest youth population that this earth has ever seen, more than 1.8 billion young people currently. Um, this is an extremely huge opportunity for us to be able to leverage together. And that's what we're currently trying to do. So when we look at young people as a growth engine for society, um, we were earlier in the day to, uh, talking about the idea that young people should not be perceived anymore as a stakeholder or as a target segment, but should rather be perceived as an active participant in, uh, in civic engagement, an active participant in policy creation, decision making, and uh, being leaders of the now also, not just leaders of the future. Um, we try to give young people the platform to do that uh, through our organization. And for example, over here uh, in Russia, we give the platform on an annual basis to give or take a little bit more than 1,000 young people, uh, whether to volunteer towards the Sustainable Development Goals through our initiative Youth for Global Goals, where we're trying a lot to further that global agenda rather than waiting for um, um, it to be catered for us, for a better world to be created for us, we want to be on the frontier of that, an agenda that was launched back in 2015 with the agreement of all the member states of the United Nations. And we decided that we want to pioneer that as young people and take that footstep in terms of creating that better tomorrow. And that is something that we're currently on the frontier of. A lot of work that we do also currently is, is a very in heavy uh, liaison with other organizations that are interested in volunteers. I'll give an example, the United Nations Volunteers, where we do a lot of work together, for example, in West Africa, where we're trying to mobilize young people over there within their local communities to eradicate uh, certain forms of inequality, where we're trying to work together on improving the quality of education or uh, some things that are as simple as just making young people more aware about the Sustainable Development Goals. And that is something that we've co-created together in the form of the Young Person's Guide to Saving the World. If you're a young person and you think you want to save the world, how about you start with knowing what the Sustainable Development Goals are and then take it forward from there. Because sometimes it can be just as simple as that. As me being an advocate for something, I believe in something, and I put that on the forefront of every single thing that I do. Uh, when it comes to our future plans or our next steps, um, Something that a lot of times we're missing as young people, especially when we're, when we're doing thematic work or when we're trying to do work that's creating impact, is monitoring and, monitoring and evaluation. The importance of information and data. Um, because we do a lot of work and we invest, we have a lot of energy and a lot of passion. So we go out there to the field and we always want to get our hands dirty. But it's also very important for us to understand how to structure and how to create a framework that enables us to evaluate the impact of that work. And that's something we're really working on uh, in this current period of time where we're trying to understand what is the true power of all these volunteers that are coming from 122 countries? What is the actual impact that they're creating in the short and long term on their societies? That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, after working on the Young Person's Guide to Saving the World, we were like, okay, what happens if we start targeting young people from the age of high school and giving them that opportunity to get educated about the SDGs or the Sustainable Development Goals, which is one of the core components of our volunteering program, but in a cool way, as you would say it for young people. Gamify it, make it something that is interesting for them to learn, where volunteering or getting educated about sustainable development would transform from it being a curriculum that is in a school book or something that you would see in a 100-page document transcript into something that is engaging something that is fun, and something that I would like to take part of me and also promote it in my local community. So I would say the key, the key plans for the future is expanding that scope of impact, measuring it and evaluating it to be able to document what is the actual impact we're creating on society. And last but not least, as much as possible, increase our volunteering scope because that is something that is extremely important. Get as much volunteers as possible, put them out there to try to shape 
a better world together. And we can only do that with our partners, that a lot of them are sitting over here now with us on the panel, and only with active civic participation of young people. So a big shout out to all our volunteers out there because they're doing all the good work. I'm just here talking on their behalf. Like they're, they're, they're the ones that are making it happen. Thank you very much, Shadur Rahman, for your uh, presentation. So you participate in the civil platform of development, and as a speaker, as a participant of our festival, uh, I think you could also speak with us about the questions of inclusion, uh, about the participation of uh, handicapped people uh, in uh, our practice. Could you please tell about the effectiveness of uh, your work with the frames or without frames? Uh, and how this uh, issue is discussed here on the festival. It's very important to know that each tense person in the world has uh, the stigma. It can be open or it can be closed. And when the people having a stigma uh, are part of a volunteer, so I'm also a volunteer from time to time as well. As I, was I was volunteer on the Olympics, on the Paralympics. So the volunteers being a part of uh, the volunteer team, they get the practice of intercommunication with handicapped people. They are practicing uh, some actions, and they are already anticipating people who go to these events. And uh, it's it's very great that on the Festival of Youth and Students, I have seen and I know some of my friends, volunteers uh, from uh, different regions. The girl Natasha from Kurgan, the volunteer Vladimir uh, on the wheelchair from Moscow. As I know. There are also some handicapped volunteers uh, from all over the world here. And uh, we've seen one girl from Denmark uh, who was also a volunteer on the wheelchair from Denmark. And it, everything shows the interconnection of the world uh, that was translated to the whole, whole world, that there are no boundaries. And if we go further, you know, I have also one friend, one girlfriend uh, on the wheelchair. She went to Brazil. She was volunteering there. Of course, it was not so easy for her to come there. But still, there is one issue. When the people who are handicapped, handicapped are in the process, inside of it, when they are shown to the general volunteers, they are motivating them. They are motivating them not to lose their grip. Because, you know, handicapped people must make something more than the regular ones. They need more effort to wash themselves, to go to the toilet, to get to the place, to get dressed. Of course, uh, the media is uh, acceptable. We can go here inside, but uh, uh, not all of the means we have here and all on all other places. The people. And we are now in the midst, uh, in the center of the goodness, if I may say like this. So yesterday I gave hugs, I think 30 times, just with the regular people, with the people who are ready to embrace us. And the key moment here, and I must uh, stress it out, you can train yourself on the persons uh, who are open, who are handicapped. You just go to us because they are volunteers. They are ready to embrace you. They are ready to be the part of this communication between the handicapped ones and the others. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victor. Thank you for your participation at the festival. A lot of thanks. Now we can uh, take a look uh, on the video of the action. Thank you. So perhaps we can see it until the end. So, what is to be thankful? It's acceptable, it's happy, it's warm. 
This is the warmth of your soul and it's transmitted not only to the one who tells thank you, it's the warmth for everyone around you and for you of course, because you is the one who said thank you. Thank you. This is the all Russia action of the public th gratefulness without no borders, without any boundaries, without terms limiting the action. Thank you means I remember. I remember the good that was made to me and I return this good. Everything starts from one postcard. You can find in uh, the mail department in Russia from several types of cards. If you know the address of, uh, of uh, the person whom you are thankful to, just choose it. If you don't know where your addressee is, so take the thank you card with the address of the center. You just can write down your personal history, the history of your gratefulness, and to mail it. And the story goes directly to us. And to find your addressee, we can uh, uh, we need to know the more information uh, the possible. His, his or her name, the place of work, la later and now. But if we don't find the person, if we don't find the... Uh, you just can write down your history as thorough as possible. And the popular... Uh, and you will share... And we will share your story in the popular media. And I think the one to whom you are grateful to will get the story and it will warmer. You can ask us when will it start? It starts today, right now. Everything starts from you. Let everyone of the people living in our country embrace each other because and to be grateful because gratefulness is the thing the fire that burns inside you and can be shared with others Well, I would like to end our session optimistically. And dear colleagues, if you have any questions, you are free to ask them. I have a question to Yelena Ulyanova. Actually, I heard the answer, but I would compress it for the second time. If I want to send a, a postcard, where should I go? And if I don't know the address, what should uh, what should be done? You just need to go to the post office of the Russian Federation, uh, not the Sberbank, not the bank. Okay, you go to the mail, you take your card. If you don't know the address, you just uh, take the card with our address, the address of our organization, of our bank center, uh, of our uh, center. Uh, it goes to our mail. And our volunteers are working with this information, that are finding this person. And then the postcard goes to the city where this person lives. Then the volunteers who are in the cities where the postcards come to, they deliver it personally. And the volunteer goes personally to the address that's found by uh, our company. It's very important that uh, it goes from hand to hand that it is transferred personally. Uh, this feeling must uh, be conducted through many peoples. And on our website, blagodaryu.ru, we will uh, write down all the stories that were submitted to us. And the people will be able to write uh, to, to access to our bank, data bank to find these people. Thank you very much. Uh, dear colleague, did you have a question? Hello, Artyom Tokarev, TAS agency, news agency. One technical uh, question combined with the, pro, with the projects I want to make good things. 
as I understand, the project is already started, or it will be started in the nearest time. And uh, actually, uh, when uh, will you draw the final line for this 500 grants out of 1,000? Actually, we're starting the project right now, from this day on. And further, OK, speaking about 500 winners, we're speaking not only about the grants only. These are different, there are different means of support and we can render this support not only in the financial uh, financial topics because you know not everyone needs the financial support we can just be part of the project we can uh, work with the project project informally we can talk to someone we can uh, make some calls we can help you to be better and if we can speak in details i think artyom will uh, speak about the terms and conditions about the data because you know we're we're working in the full partnerships with our with our colleagues we have a registration of project until the end of this year and in january uh, we will make the public voting for the social initiatives. It will be on the platform, web platform, dobrovolcyofrussia.ru. And in the middle of uh, the spring, at March, we will be able to uh, uh, speak about the winners. So the winners will be declared on March. So you still have three months for registration. Uh, the announcement will be made today. So actually it's now and we're going to promote it at the festival to make sure that all the participants of the uh, festival uh, who came here with their initiatives could register and get support. Do, do you have any other questions? Microphone, please. A festival mile. It's about the festival mile competition. Many volunteers were busy, and many people came and signed up, but uh, they there were no no the booking was full and they couldn't participate. It's uh, I, I've worked in the in the sports. Uh, uh, industry a lot. I, I think we need to have one more um, festival mile uh, race without the medals, without just for so that. So I'm talking on behalf of uh, of all the young people who would like to take part. And uh, let's uh, talk to the directorate of our sports programs. Maybe I'm a bit late. Uh, this is uh, this is not our probably exactly the topic of our press conference. Uh, thank you very much, anyway, thank you. All right, so if no more questions, uh, thank you very much for your time and for your questions. Uh, I also thank our speakers. Uh, our press conference is uh, finished.